Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in for another Broken Meeple Top 10. And just before we get started, a little bit of a rant, I'm sorry, we'll get to the Top 10, but kind of need to get one or two things off my chest. Firstly, it's a shame that the last video never got to the same popularity as the previous one. I kind of enjoyed doing that uh, Top 10 Annoying Characters one. It was only a ton-in-cheek list, but oh well, you can't always predict which ones will uh, be wanted more by the community or not. Secondly though, I do have to stress, it's been a long time since I've had to deal with trolls. Unfortunately, the last couple of videos have had one or two, not, not many, but one or two that have overstepped the mark. So let's make thing, one thing perfectly clear here. Firstly, I welcome debate, okay? I welcome debate in my videos. You're more than welcome to disagree with stuff I say, as long as you're civil and polite about it. That's what I like to see, diversity and different opinions. I do not, however, like to see constant whining and, frankly, nasty abuse. You know, constructive criticism is great. You know, somebody saying, oh, that's quite interesting, but I disagree with your points here and here because of X, Y, and Z. That's what I like to see. Another type of post I, I don't mind seeing is, you know, just, that's a good video. However, one tip, have you considered to maybe put timestamps in your video or to, uh, you know, say the game, name of the game quicker after you come in on the transition? That's useful information. I take that to heart. You are useless and you, nobody should take any advice of you whatsoever on a game or, oh, dare you, dare you copy somebody else because apparently on the internet no one person has ever done the same video as another person. Um, hello, internet. You know, that's more trolling and abuse. Okay. They have a cave troll. So there's a pretty big difference between them, and certainly I do not tolerate them on this channel. So if you're giving constructive criticism or you're debating the topic at hand, great, I want to see more of it. But if you're just there to troll, your comments will be deleted. That's your only warning. Okay? And secondly, one last thing I want to get off my chest because, well, <laughs> you know, it's kind of been sitting there for a while. I come from Britain. Okay, most people around the world struggle to get an English accent at the best of times. You know, it, we sound a bit weird, I admit. I also come from an area of Britain, it's called Somerset. Our accent is weird compared to most Britons. Okay, so I already stand out in my own country, let alone other countries. And now I live in Portsmouth, which is kind of like the diametrically opposite end to the accent I once had. Now, I primarily still have my Somerset accent, but, you know, maybe some of the Portsmouth accent has rolled in and kind of gelled it in one big mess. And on top of that, I grew up with a speech impediment. A lot of people don't know this. I was in special needs for a lot of primary school and a bit of secondary school, and the only reason I was able to overcome the speech impediment and learning difficulties I had was due to some of the best teachers that any primary school could have ever asked for. They got me through a difficult stage and I was able to, you know, become, you know, decent enough academically and get to the stage I'm at now. It's all down to them. So yes, I don't pronounce things perfectly. No, I don't have the best accent. And I certainly do have times where I pronounce things weird or it sounds odd on camera. You know, I don't realize I'm saying the word tap when I say top. You know, I, I think I'm saying top, but it sounds like tap on the camera. Or maybe just the way I say it sounds like that. I can't help it. Please stop hurling abuse about that fact, okay? It's just by speech. I can't do much about it. Okay, so those little two rants out of the way. Let's actually get on with a more positive note. Top 10 games I love to fail at. Okay, you're probably wondering, what are you on about, you strange fool? Well, this is a weird list, and yeah, I'm not copying anyone this time, okay? This one is, I like to play games. I like to play games, and I like to, you know, I like to try to win, obviously. I play to win, but I don't need to win in order to enjoy the game. If I lose a game, it's like, ah, oh, that's a shame. Oh, well, that was still a good bit of fun, right, guys? These are games where losing is actually sometimes more fun than actually winning. You know, crazy antics and shoe, or stories are told, or the experience is just so engrossing that I don't care one way or another if I come last by one point to a thousand. These are games where I just find that no matter what happens, I'm having a blast, and failure is sometimes maybe even a better option. So without further ado, let's get started on a more positive list this time round. Top 10 games I love to fail at. My number 10 I can't really get from you because it's in my legendary vault upstairs and that is Adian Legendary. 
Is that quick enough for you? <laughs> Sorry if it sounds like I'm trolling. I'm just like trying to get into the swing of it. So Legendary Adian. I talk a bit about this game where I mention it has one of the best ways you can die in it. And certainly if I've died by this method, I find it hilarious anyway. The point where you get face hugged and then a chestburster card appears in your deck and suddenly you're on a time limit for the rest of the game because, you know, on top of the other time limit you already have because that chestburster is going for your deck, going for your deck, until eventually you draw it and then bleh, you know, the chestburster comes out and that is the way you die. That's already a fun way to fail. But in this one, it's because it just gives me that flavor and feel of the alien movies and the games and all those classic moments where, you know, you're, you've got all the weaponry in the world and it's not enough. You have your cards, you have your attack power, you have your squad, but aliens are just coming at you, coming at you, and it's just like every amazing action scene in Aliens, at least going through my mind. You have to accept that with this list, maybe there's a little bit of imagination going on, but then that's kind of what happens when I use games as a kind of form of escapism. So with this one, it doesn't matter if I fail, you know, on the first turn by a face hugger, or, you know, if I've gone all the way, got to the queen, and then suddenly it's like, last line of defense, then, oh, the aliens swarm me, or the queen gets me, and I fail at that point. Doesn't matter, because the scenarios are so well done in aliens, they feel just like the movies, the theme comes out very well for what is a deck builder, and deck builders are hard to get the theme right, you gotta admit, so for this one to do it so well, is pretty good going, you know, can't knock it. Easy enough to teach, you know, if you've played any of the legendary games, you kind of know how this one works. The expansion did it good as well, you could even play the bad guy. You know, try and play the queen if you dare. And like I say, you could almost replace this with maybe the legendary predators and the legendary fireflies, you know, they're equally thematic, but I think that the Aeon taps it in terms of how thematic it is, obviously the chest burst, the way of dying, and just because I prefer aliens to predator. Uh oh, no, no, don't kill me, bitch, folks. My number nine is my favorite game of all time, and yeah, you'd be thinking this would be higher up. Well, there are some games I just love to fare that more. But this is my favorite game, or at least it was of the top 100 last year. Who knows what it will be this year? Hmm. But it's Sentinels of the Multiverse. Sentinels of the Multiverse, the superhero card game that I still adore to this day. Whether I play it in card game form or on the app, the app is fantastic. And, you know, I think they've now just released Oblivion for that. So the, the recent expansion, it's a bit of a mammoth to play in card form. On the app, though, oh, yes, yeah, sorts out a lot of the bookkeeping for you and just makes that particular scenario really cool. But with me, I'm just a superhero nut. I love superheroes. Marvel, DC... TV, movies, I love them. You know, the only thing that's missing from my life in terms of superheroes is comics. Because I watched TV shows as a kid, I watch the movies now, but I never really got into reading comics for some bizarre reason. But love superheroes. So a game about superheroes naturally gets my imaginative juices flowing, where even though these are parodies of some of the characters, or, you know, like copies of them in a sense, you know, Bunker is baiting the Iron Man ripoff and that sort of thing, you just can't help but imagine your favorite heroes in those spots. But on top of this, the games rarely, for me anyway, end in complete failure really quickly. They usually start off where you're getting pummeled by the bad guy and then you slowly build up and build up and you start to recover. It's almost like Avengers in a sense, you know. You get hit badly, you take a beating, but then you come back and you avenge. And with this one, you just... You build up and build up and you're fighting almost on your last legs, you know, it's like, heal him, you buff me, protect me, right, going in for a strike, you know, you're working as a solid co-op team, particularly when there's four of you, because you've got four, you know, a nice wide diversity of abilities in your team, and then you may succeed, I mean, you know, great if you succeed, but sometimes you fail, sometimes all the heroes get knocked down, I mean, we already had Infinity of War for that, oh god, spoilers, but, you know, who hasn't watched that by now, come on. And oh, end game can't wait. Anyway, I'm going off track. But with this, yeah, even if you lose, it just feels like an epic showdown. And Oblivion had that same thing with the expansion. It's like you might lose, but my God, you have an epic battle before it happens. And it's just, it's that feeling of epicness that means that whether I fail this game, I do not care. Because I rarely ever fail this game in a state where I feel like I never stood a chance. Or like, oh, that was way too punishing. I just couldn't do anything about it. Oh, that soured my mood a bit. He's like, no, no, I, if I fail, 
I fail, but I felt like I was putting up a fighting chance. And granted, some of that imagination does help with regards to just sort of imagining my favourite Marvel and DC heroes in place of these various characters, but it just works so well. I love the theme in this game, and I suppose theme plays a big part in this whole list. You know, if I don't mind failing a game when the theme gets me engrossed and immersed. It's a bit different than, say, like, you know, let's go, you know, do you want to play um, Age of Steam? Not really, but fine, let's play it. And then for five hours, you're there basically not with any chance to winning, and all you're doing is putting train tracks down. Yay. You know, it's like, no theme, that's not exactly, well, you know, no decent theme. That's not going to engross me. So if I fail that game, it's going to kind of suck. But, you know, even if I win that game, it's going to suck for me. But the theme, strong theme, always works for me. I am very much a theme person. So number nine, Sentinels of the Monsters. Number eight, I finally have a game to show you. Ooh, a bit of show and tell. Yes, number eight is a co-op game that predominantly I do play solo, I must admit. And I almost thought about putting two games in this one because technically you could argue they're similar. But I decided against it because as much as I like both games, one of them, you don't feel like you get as much comedy out of failing at it as you do with the other one. And that is Robinson Crusoe. Robinson, come on, get out. It refuses to come out without taking a play mat with it. Oh, well, fair enough. Yes, Portal Games, Ignacy Trevacek, the good old Robinson Crusoe. This one, if I fail, what does it matter? You have a great co-op experience, you're telling a good story as you're doing so, and what makes this one, and you, you can probably guess, the one I was other considering was uh, First Martians behind me, but I didn't want to include that because if you fail First Martians, that one's a lot more serious, I feel. You know, the story's more serious, the mood is more serious. If you fail it, it's like, ah, oh well, that was still good fun. This one, though, a lot of the times you're failing because, A, the game is so stupidly hard that it's almost like that guy out of Saving Private Ryan or something. He was like, they're getting bombed, bombed to heaven and back all the time. And he's just like, give us a chance! Give us a chance! It's like it's like that with this game because you're getting bashed by weather, the, the animals on the island, the cards, the dice, everything is just out to screw you over. But the cards also add that cool thematic element. You go through and do things like, you know, making you know, pots and pans and <laughs> weird fireplaces and that, exploring the landscape and the different scenarios, and then the cards get shuffled into the deck and they come back as recurring events. And it's just great theme when you realize that that card you had earlier that said, mm, berries, mm, these are quite good, mm, mm, these taste good, nothing possibly bad did ever come of eating berries off a bush. And then later on it comes back and you realize you've now got stomach cramps and all sorts of we weird hijinks ensue. And there's all sorts of other cool stuff like that. But as you're playing the game, whether it's solo or in a group, you can't help but just laugh at some of those outcomes. One of the funniest videos I have seen from the Dice Tower, I must admit, was a, a live play of Robinson Crusoe, where they were teaching Sam Healy. They had Ignacity teaching the three of them. If you haven't seen that video, go watch it. It's hilarious. <laughs> you know, they are just joking constantly about the cards that come off, about the antics they're doing, about the failures they have. And that... Who cares if you fail? In fact, most of the time you play this game, you expect to fail. It's <laughs> just what it is, you know, Ignacy, you made it ridiculously hard. What do you expect? Although I have beaten a few scenarios in it, but I've certainly lost a lot more than I've won. And those stories, the cards, it just makes it. Again, strong theme always goes down. Cannot wait for Mystery Tales. That is so on my radar the second that comes out. I cannot wait to try it. I only hope I can get a group together that's willing to do the campaign because it will kind of suck a bit to do it solo, but we'll see. I'm definitely looking forward to more content for an excellent game that I couldn't care less if I succeed and get saved or if I die a slow pain to death on the side. My number seven is a game that I haven't got to the table in a quite a long time, actually. Tasty Minstrel reprinted this game, and they did a blinding good job of it. Even though you have to admit, Days of Wonder does do it better from an aesthetics point of view, but that's a small gripe. Colosseum. Colosseum, you may think, wait a minute, a Euro game? Why is this one so high on your list? Well, A, it's number seven, but B, Colosseum, this is a slight caveat. With Colosseum, you are putting together a like a circus show for you know in the Colosseum, and you're trying to put on things like lions and dancers and chariot races and gladiators and all that sort of stuff. And it sounds like okay, 
I get the idea, you're getting points for your the show that you put on, but where's the love to fail aspect? Well, here's the caveat. I play with a house rule that, you know, I've seen on live plays as well, that it's more of a thematic house rule. You're not forced to do it, but I encourage it. And it's basically that when you put on this show, you have to describe what the show's about. So you might have a bunch of tokens here, and there's like, hmm, there's two lions, and there's a bush, plant pot, and a gladiator, and a slightly busted chariot. You've got to then describe what that show's about, okay? You know, a, a gladiator tries to outrun two lions on a busted chariot, falls into a hedge, gets eaten, and and the vase is there in the middle. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not very good at putting on circus shows, obviously. But that added element of describing the show just adds that high level of comedic factor. And by the time I finished this game, I couldn't care less if I, like, oh, wait a minute, did I just, like, do really badly? Oh, well, I'm sure I put on an amusing show while I was at it, but I'm also laughing my head off and falling in my, uh, my chair at the ideas that other people are coming up with. I've, I've heard disturbing shows about trees. <laughs> I've heard extremely gory and bloodthirsty gladiatorial combats. And I've had everything that sounds like something out of Wacky Races or Rat Race described as part of a chariot show. It's, there's all sorts of weird ideas that I have heard. And when that's all thrown together, when you consider that it's quite cartoony, it's meant to be taken lightly. You know, you've got the, you know, other senators and Caesar and that going to come and visit you. That always gets a good laugh. But like I say, with that caveat in place, I don't care if I failed this one because I've had a blast talking about all these stupid shows that we've put on. Again, I've seen live plays of this being done. It's hilarious when I watch that as well. So granted, yeah, if you play this super seriously, this wouldn't make your list. You would just think, oh, that was a bit of fun. It was light, but uh, no, is that it? No, no, no. you got to go into this with a bit of imagination, bit of lightheartedness, and it'll do you just fine. Coliseum. My number six harks back to my D&D &D games, and that is Thunderworks Games Role Player. Now, Role Player is my replacement for Sagrada. Okay, Sagrada is a good game, I'm not going to deny that. But, if you're going to ask me which one I prefer, this one by a long shot. And this has got the expansion in it, Monsters and Minions, which also base it up a bit for me. But with this one, again, it comes from me having a history as an RPG player. I don't do it so much now, I haven't got the time. But I used to do D&D, &D, Deadlands, Shadowrun, Vampire the Masquerade. Was there others I can think of? You know, An Adventure. That's a one that my friend created. Which I think uh, there was one about. Was it called Paranoia? That was a good laugh. And you know, say there was just quite a few of them that I've mainly played. I've DM'd occasionally, and I have a good laugh. Well, this one just sings to my old, you know, D&D &D child, really, because in this you're rolling dice and creating a fantasy D&D &D character. Much like Sagrada, you're rolling the dice, you're trying to get the colours and values in various places, but this has the theme of collecting items and traits and building up a character. It even gives you some sheets at the end so that you can draft your character and use it in an actual campaign. Of course, it would be ridiculously overpowered if you tried, but still, I love that touch. But with this one, I couldn't care less if I fail at this one because I'm just having a blast creating this character. And I can create some weird characters. I've had basically like worst monk ever created where I've been weak, feeble, dumb. You know, pretty much every trait that says if you have eight or less in the stat, you will get points. And I didn't win, but I almost, I almost won. You know, I think I came second. And it was because I was getting a lot of points for the... Uh, really feeble stats I had because I had the cards to go with it. I made up for the fact that I wasn't getting points for getting like 18 in a category. But with this, whether it's me or other players, everybody is just talking smack about everybody's character. You're creating all sorts of weird ones yourself, you know, intelligence 4, wisdom 8, you know, strength 20, you know, stupid, stupid stats all over the place. And everybody who has played D&D can hark back to their old stories of what they've created or just get into the theme that this is effectively a D&D character you're creating and come up with all the usual tropes that everybody knows from playing D&D. Of course, again, without that history, without that backing, maybe this wouldn't be on your list, but it certainly sings strong for me just because, like I say, character building. <laughs> it's a game about character building and it's character building. You know, it works both ways. So, role player. Makes a nice number six.
But number five is a negotiation game, and of course, who doesn't have a blast when they're playing Sheriff in Nottingham? I mean, this one just sings to me with regards to, you know, hilarious stories and everyone making impressions as the Sheriff, you know, coming up with tropes from anything from Monty Python to Robin Hood to all sorts of different other little fancy films in this kind of setting, and who cares if I got the least amount of money at the end? I'm too busy just having fun, hamming it up like crazy with the imagination and the role play that this one creates. I've been doing Monty Python high pitch women voices for like the old lady from the expansion in here. Be any progress? Yeah, there's got... some lovely filth down here. Oh, how'd you do? Everybody's talking smack at each other, bribing like you open his bag. No, no, my bread's so much better than his. His is false bread. His is made out of sticks and weed. You know, it's everyone's just talking smack at each other while trying to get their bag through. And then you realize you've been had or you caught someone out and it feels good every time you do it. I might have come last. It might be the only time I catch someone out, but that one time you do catch them, it's like, yes, got you. Now come with me. You're off to jail. It's just such a good laugh to play. I love it. And like I say, a lot of that comes down to role play. You can't play this seriously. I mean, who is playing Sheriff of Nottingham without role playing it up a notch? I mean, come on. You have to be giving this like some serious hilarity. You know, you have to be. But when you do, great fun. Oh, look, I've only got 10 gold at the end of the game. Don't care because I'm falling out of my chair. I've probably injured myself on the way down. And it just comes from sheer absurdity of the stuff that goes on. Sheriff in Nottingham, number five. My number four is ridiculous. It's ridiculousness in the box. Who came up with this idea? I have no idea. What was he smoking? Camel up. Camel up. Well, you, you can, it's hard enough to try to win in this game. Let's face it. You know, you play to win, but it's camels racing and stacking on top of each other with a die that comes out of a pyramid and you're making bets each round. You can't game this system. You have to play it to enjoy it. You have to know that you're going to fail at this miserably at times. And what do I care? Not a bit. Because with this, especially this new version, which is definitely the one to get, do not keep the old edition. Get this fancy version. It's so good. And... I taught this with anything up to eight players, brand new players, people who have played the original camel up, and it's just hilarious fun. The camels going backwards, the ones that I wish they had a bit more impact than they normally do, but occasionally they take half the camels around with them. You know, it just depends on how it goes. But everyone's betting, like, talking smack at the camels for some reason, and it's one of those things where if you do fail, it's not usually because, oh, I just bet badly. No, it's because the camels did something crazy and ridiculous that you just can't help but laugh at the fact that you failed as a result. It's like, green is ahead, this will not be a problem until red jumps on top of blue, which then jumps up on top of purple, which then jumps up on top of the white, which then gets carried back. Green jumps on the black, gets carried back, and then yellow comes in out of nowhere and wins. You know, it's stupid stuff like that that I have seen happen. And everybody's like rising out of their chair, just cheering about it. It's always great to play this and always a good amount of fun. Doesn't matter if I lose. Whoopee. And if I fail at this one, it's usually, you know, more amusing for the fact that, you know, the camels did something so absurd that I just bet on completely the wrong ones. You know, somebody had their cheering token down and I couldn't do anything about it. Or someone was quicker to me on the betting front. It's just a solid game. Win or lose. Do not care. Camel. Hopefully the light is going to last a bit longer, but we'll see. You know, I, I did charge up the batteries. I don't know what's going on with them, but... Oh, well, number three. Cosmic Encounter. Oh, my God, this is heavy. Yeah, there's a lot in this box. <laughs> a lot in this box. But Cosmic Encounter... Do I need to explain this one? You know, similar to Sheriff in Nottingham. It's negotiation. And negotiation games tend to generate a lot of laughter and a lot of stories and memorable moments anyway. But with Cosmic Encounter... The alien combinations alone will generate all sorts of weird stories. And it doesn't matter if I'm losing badly because I might be able to pull it back and get a shared victory. It's still something that I can try to do, in effect. But even if I do fail, 
even if I'm right at the back, I'm still just loving the negotiation, loving all the fact that everybody's either ganging up on you or you're 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 trying to win, you're trying to like, oh, oh hello with you, it's all nice, yeah, come on, yeah, hugs, yeah, you want to come with me. And <laughs> especially when some of the alien powers just allow you to do such ridiculous things that you can't help but laugh at it. You know, the parasite from Cosmic and Gatter, for example, is, is a, one of my favorite ones where basically you can always ally with someone no matter whether they say no or not or something like that. And that's just, that's just amazing. This is like, it's like, nope, Luke, you can't come. You're not coming with me. Oh, I can't come, man. I, well, guess what, boy? It is, I'm coming straight over and I'm just going to annoy you and everybody laughs. It's, I love it. Love this game already. But again, I just forget the fact that I'm trying to win. In fact, most of the time when I play this game, I will go for a shared victory. I'd rather have the shared victory than a solo victory half the time because I'm bringing other people with me. Not to mention less people want to gang up on me when I do it. You know, victory is almost just whatever. It's a side thing. The negotiation, the stupid powers, the back and forth with the card zapping and the power zapping and all these stuff, that, all the stuff that goes on just makes this for a very enjoyable experience. Whether win or lose, don't care. Cosmic Encounter, solid three. My number two is a game that was mostly hanging around the 20s and 30s in my top 100. This has a contender that I've shoot up to my top 10. I am just, for some reason, enjoying this so much lately. I'm playing it loads. Pursuit of Happiness. Oi, the game of life Euro edition, as I call it. That's pretty much what this game is. And I couldn't care less if I won this by a mile or if I lost by a mile because this is effectively I play the game how I want to play it. You basically are creating your life from teenager to old age when you die and much like the original game of life you know you'll try to complete little projects, you'll go buy items, you know you'll go on holidays, do activities, find a date, make a family, get a job, temp job, real job, you know, whatever, you know, big CEO or you're a farmer or just, you know, a paper boy, whatever. You do what you want to do in this game. And that in itself means that I couldn't care less if I won this game at all. You know, the amount of times I've, you know, I've, I've probably won this more often than I've lost, but the stories, when we finish, I want to see what everyone's character is like and see what they created. I, I'm already role-playing my character as I go through the game and making wisecracks at it. And everybody's doing the same thing with theirs. And when I finish, I think, oh, I lost that game, but come on. Come on, guys. I mean, I did this and this and this, and it's just like, yeah, that's got to be worth it. And I'll admit, the... <laughs> I'm probably in danger of this one, but I remember a recent game where I won by a point. I wasn't even trying to win. I actually thought I was deliberately tanking myself. I just wanted to see what would happen. The game hinders you, stresses you from doing it, and stresses you every round if you try and date two partners. I decided, you know what, halfway through the game, I needed the resources, I had the spare capacity, I thought, you know what, I'm just going to try it. Never tried it before. Dated two partners. Got into a relationship with both of them, I think, or a relationship with one and a date with the other, I can't remember, but I was effectively like, you know, two at the same time. Yes, I know, special level of hell. And uh, I ended up winning by a point despite it, <laughs> which actually makes it sound a lot worse because I was expecting to lose. I thought, I am doing something that no one should ever do in real life. And I got victory for it. It's, yeah, um, yeah take it away, father. You're going to burn in a very special level of hell. Indeed I will. But it was hilarious to do it. I was just making the wisecracks of it. Everybody was like taunting me for it. It's like, how dare you? You know, how does how does Sheila feel right now? And it's like, well, she thinks I'm doing this. And you're making up stories. And like I say, that's, that's a really bad subject, I'll admit. But even when you're not doing that, when you've got some stupid job, when your projects are like, I mean, what was the last game I played at uh, StabCon? Um, the first two projects I did were learn how to draw and grow a bonsai tree. Party animal. Yeah. But I basically leveled them up at the same time. So I was basically making up that not only am I slowly growing this bonsai tree, I'm learning how to draw said bonsai tree as I'm drawing it. Talk about the most boring teenage life ever for a child to have. I grew a bonsai tree and I learned how to draw it. Fun. You know, but it's stories like that that make me love this game. I love this game so much. And like I said, I can't believe it's not higher in my top 100 in the previous years. 
Possibly because four players can make it drag a little bit, but the expansion has helped. It's brought in more cards, more variety. I kickstarted the most recent one, obviously. But I think just because I've got it to the table more and I'm just enjoying that lighthearted tale of what my character's like and what everyone else's character's like, people are enjoying it. You know, I'm introducing new players to it and they're going, this is a really good laugh. Can you bring it again? And that really puts me in a good mood as well to see people enjoying a game that I've brought to the table. You know, if they don't enjoy it, fine. But, you know, it's so much better when someone enjoys a game you've brought because it sings to them or it just gives them, puts them in a good mood. I don't know. But this was dangerously close to being my number one. It's certainly deserving of a number two. Pursuit to Happiness. I love, love, love this game. If you have not tried it, I highly recommend you do. The worker placement version of the game of life. It's a blast. And my number one yeah, is getting a bit dark and one light has gone out. I do apologize, but you know, we'll just have to roll with it. So this is basically my party game for the list. I mean, you could argue that Sheriff of Nottingham and stuff like that was a party game, but uh, you know, I didn't want to make this list just party games. And there are some party games where if you lose them, it's like, mm, was it that fun to lose it? I don't know, because Time's Up, for example, you've had like, oh God, you know, uh, you know, you've know, you got some like bad blood between some people who take it too seriously. Anyway, you know what it is. Telestrations, yes, Telestrations is my number one. It's a party game, yes, so you're not technically out to win, which maybe throws a spanner in the works, but one thing about this is people like to sort of think, oh yeah, I can draw well and I've done this and yay, I got from a cat, I got from a whatever, farmer, farmer, farming, farmer, farmer. Yay, I got to the end of my flip chart and all is well. Have you seen my drawing? <laughs> I cannot draw out of a paper bag. I mean, what's the Rowan Atkinson Blackadder line? I know from long experience that my men have all the artistic talent of a cluster of colorblind hedgehogs <laughs> in a bag. <laughs> it's pretty much how I am with drawing. I cannot draw, I make no qualms about it, I suck at drawing. But that makes this game so much better because I'm constantly apologizing to everyone after me going, it's like somebody gives me a, a like, you know, a, a tractor as a clue to give. And I'm constantly apologizing to the person after me. It's like, I'm sorry, I can't help it. Oh, no, no, no. Because I can't draw, I can't even draw a tractor. I can't draw a dog. I can't draw a person unless it's a stick man. I suck right royally at drawing. When I was in school, I think I gave up art after year eight or nine. And before then, the only bit of art that I was even remotely good at was landscape art. You know, scenery and water and stuff like that. And even then, I wasn't exactly that great at it, but I enjoyed it more. Here though, oh my God, I just draw rubbish pictures all day long. And it is so much fun to pass the flip chart over to my left, who then just stares at it in blind shock. <laughs> or comes out with curse word after profanity after whatever, just because they're looking at this going, what is this? <laughs> it's like, you call this art? <laughs> and that makes it more fun. I suck and fail hard at art, but it makes this game so much more fun, so I can't help it. Yes, okay, you're not really trying to win unless you do the points thing, which if you do that, shame on you. But, you know, it's just, so much fun to do it. So good. Gives me all the laughs in the world. And when it's like, these are games I love to fail at, I cannot not fail at this one because I suck so much at drawing. It just works well. So number one, Telestrations, it had to be. So with a few honorable mentions in line, what was I considering? Uh, Dream Home? You build up a funky little home, you comment about it, you look at it, it's your creation, whatever. Uh, downforce, it doesn't matter if you come last, you've had so much fun blocking each other in the race that it's always a good laugh to do. Uh, mentioned Time's Up already. Uh, Flam Rouge, similar, you know, it's a racing game. I think racing games, even if you lose them, as long as you're not right at the back doing nothing, you're generally having a good time with a racing game. Uh, XCOM, you know, the stressful co-op game, that works pretty well when you're, even if you fail it, because you've had a good energetic experience while you're playing it, but the dice can hose you a bit, so that's kind of why I left it out. Uh, Caverna, again, you're creating your farm, I don't care if I lose, I've got my sheep farm right here, I am happy. 
Hmm. <laughs> so, Empires of the Void 2, the second edition. I was really considering putting this on the list. I mean, you do tell some good stories, but it's a Euro-style game at the end of the day. I mean, you could maybe mention it my 11 or 12. Uh, near and Far, you know, the story, you get the stories out of that one. But again, I didn't think it was strong enough to make the list. And then there were a few other weird ones like Escape from the Aliens Out of Space, Viral... Uh, Snow Tales, I consider, because that one, you know, you're careening out of control in your sled, and it's always a good laugh. I don't care if I come last. It's still sometimes down to the wire. It's like, oh, I only just lost. Ah, oh, again, racing games, I think, fit this theme quite well. Even though I didn't put any racing games on the list. Like I say, I bet you they'll be in my teens, though. Not, no word about that. Uh, Takedo, uh, Dimension... I'm not sure why I put that one on there. I suppose probably because I've had some good funs with Dimension, you know, playing that and watching people fail hard at it. But yeah, I mean, they were there were some really good ones in here. So with regards to a Patreon choice, this Patreon choice kind of covers a whole genre, really. But, you know, I have to admit, this does work. And that is pretty much any dexterity game you can think of. The main example I had was Tok Tok Woodman. You know, where you've got the little axe and you're chopping away at the tree, trying to get the tree bark pieces off. You know, but you could apply it to Bandu that I've got there, Junkar, Beast of Balance, whatever it's called. Pretty much any dexterity game. And it kind of works. I agree with this as a Patreon choice. Because with the dexterity game, even if you kind of suck at it, you're still having a good laugh building it. Everyone's talking smack at your building creation. There's this like, oh, it's going to fall. Oh, no. But, you know, you're watching everybody else. And not everybody's particularly good at stacking stuff anyway. And, you know, in Tok Tok Woman, I have to admit, I fail miserably at that one as well. Because I can't judge power. You know, if I'm there with the axe, I'm there. It's either so soft that it's barely even felt it. Or it's so hard that I've sent it through the window into the neighbor's yard and it's become a new tree in their back garden. You know, I can't judge the power right. So I have a good time with these. Granted, I think some dexterity games do it a bit better than others. Like I'm quite fond of Bandu that I recently got in a Britain buy. Not the biggest fan of Top Top Woman, I'll admit, but Junk Art I quite like. I mean, I'm generally more about stacking games for dexterity than I am, you know, the whole balancing aspect, or not balancing, but you know what I mean. The, the power judgment, I don't know, what would you call Top Top Woman? You know, tumbling dice in the other room, that's a bit of a laugh, but I mean, that's just rolling dice, so I didn't think that would count much either. But yeah, you know, the stacking dexterity games I can get behind, but Patreons thought pretty much any dexterity game would do, and, you know, that'd be quite cool. You got any examples for that? Let me know. So, top 10 games I love to fail at. Did anyone else do this list? Possibly. Who knows? It's the internet. Can't help it if someone else has. But, you know, like I say, hope you like the fact that I'm mentioning the names a little bit quicker. You know, I will try to do that more often, especially if the transitions I'm either putting in this video or that I'll put in another video will work. You know, that might help me to do just that. But also, you know, I will put some timestamps in the description. You win, guys. It's time consuming, but I'll do it. I'm not going to put names, though. You know, I want people to at least, like, not have spoilers in the middle of the comments. But I will put some timestamps to say that number 10 is this bit, number 9 is this bit, number 8 is this bit. Okay? You guys win. I'll do that. All right? So, hopefully that's good for you. But for now, I want to know what games you love to fail at. Which ones do you suck at hard, but don't care because it gives you such a good story and experience? And what are your reasons? That's what I really want to know. It's not enough just to say, oh, you know, Takedo. I want to know why Takedo. Tell me your reasons why you either fail hard at it normally or why failing at the game doesn't matter. And if you come up with some really dry point salad euro, I'm going to get a little bit suspicious on that one. But there's got to be some good thematic inclusions in here that you can do. So if you like what you see, subscribe to the Patreon, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and come and find me and ask me questions, whatever you like to do. That's it for me. And I'll see you on the next Broken Meeple video. Remember, no trolling. It's only a game. Take care and I'll see you next time.